In this video we're going to be tying my runt stone with a tungsten bead on the front of it. So it's pretty much tied the same, there's just one little difference and that's how we tie in the antenna. So the first thing we're going to do is start with a Daiichi 1550 short shank nymph hook uh, or a TMCO 3769 short shank nymph hook uh, and a 330 seconds black tungsten bead. Now the first thing we're going to do is we're going to slide the tungsten bead back to the bend of the hook. Then we're going to take some 14 knot black thread and we're just going to tie it in right there at the front of the shank of the hook. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take some life flex or span flex. Either one would work fine and we're going to tie this one in a black and purple variation. So we're going to start with a purple life flex. We're going to take a little strand of it here and we're going to tie it in so that the curve of it faces kind of away from the hook. So I'll kind of show you what I mean as I tie it in. So you can see there how the front of it is curving away from the shank of the hook. Now you have to be careful how many wraps that you use at this stage of the fly because if you use too many wraps we're going to build up too much thread and we're not going to be able to slide our bead over those wraps. So I'm real careful how many wraps I use and I trim out the the butt ends of that life flex. Then I'm going to take my whip finisher. I'm actually going to extend it back down the shank of the hook. And the reason I do that is when we slide our bead forward up over those legs, now I can tie back in right there over the thread, making it more durable. That way there's no kind of loose ends or anything unwrapped. So I could just tie back in up over those wraps and then I take my thread all the way back to the bend of the shank of the hook. And here I'm ready to tie in my tail. I use the same material, that purple life flex. I just do the same exact thing that I did on the, the front of the fly. I'm just going to tie it in so that it kind of splays away or splits away from the hook. And you don't have to be as careful with your thread wraps at this point because we're not sliding a bead over anything. So you can just tie as normal. We're going to cover all this up with chenille anyway so it doesn't have to be pretty. You just want to make sure that it's nice and secure. So there's my antenna and my tails. Now I'm going to take some velvet chenille or ultra chenille in a micro size, real thin. And We're going to take a little strip of it here in black. This will be our body material. I'm going to tie this in right behind the bead and then along the side of the shank of the hook all the way back to the tail. And I'll take my thread forward. And I'm going to stop about a bead's length away from the bead. That's where I'm going to tie in my, my little legs. So I'm going to take another piece of that life flex and I'm going to tie it in so that the curve faces inward, the opposite way where we tied in the, the antenna or the tail. So this is actually going to curve into the fly. And you'll kind of see at the end why we did that. That way it'll give your legs nice separation when we tie in our chenille. And I do the same thing on the other side here. Tie it in so that the curve faces in towards the body of the fly. I just tie them in right along the side of the shank of the hook. Nice and secure. Real tight wraps. I'm going to pull those legs forward and wrap my thread right behind the bead. I'm going to pull all the legs forward. I'm going to lay two wraps of thread over both of them to keep them out of the way. 
Then we can take our chenille. We're going to do three wraps, at least on this size 14. It takes three wraps to get to your, your legs. And we can unwind the legs. One wrap in between the legs, one wrap in front of the legs behind the bead. Then we can capture that chenille right behind the bead. Trim it out. And then whip finish right behind the bead. You can apply a little bit of head cement or glue there, keep it from falling apart. And now we can trim the antenna. I like the antenna to be about the length of the body. Same thing with the tails, about the length of the body. And the legs I like to be just slightly longer than the body. And I trim them all together. So I just take, if I can get the one, one's fighting me there. There we go. I take them all together and draw them down. And I trim it so it's just maybe a hair longer than the body. If anybody is a little longer than they should be, you can just get in there with your scissors and trim them out. But now you can kind of see why we had those legs splay away from each other. That way they stay kind of nice and separated. Because if we tied them the other way where we curved them away from the shank of the hook, they would kind of end up like that. They would curve together and then we wouldn't get that nice leggy separation. So that is the same runt stone as before, just with a tungsten bead on the front. I've had a lot of people ask me for a tungsten version of it. That way they can fish it behind a dropper or hopper, um, a big dry fly. Tungsten bead really sinks fast. Uh, the other version's unweighted, so it doesn't really sink very fast. But it's meant to be fished on a heavy nymph rig to really get down there with another fly. But this one, you can fish behind a hopper. And a great little version of the runt stone.